Welcome, everybody, to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette, and we're so glad you're with us to stay curious with this wonderful gentleman beside me, Mr. Hugh Harris, the voice of NASA for many years, and he spent a 35-year career in public relations for NASA. How are you? Great. Good Great. to be here. Well, we're good to see you there. There's Marty sticking his head in there. Hey, Marty. <laughs> but uh, we have got the background here, we think, of the International Space Station being uh, visited by Santa's reindeer. And we're going to talk with Mr. Harris about Christmases in uh, space over the years. And there you go. You got that over there, Marty. Thank you. We can now see it on our monitor here. Uh, but you have all, of course, know Mr. Hugh Harris was the voice of NASA announcing the shuttle, first 10 or so shuttle launches, and then as, as the Director of Public Information Office for Kennedy Space Center. Uh, you had quite a fun career, didn't you? It was. It was great. And uh, uh, is Anita out there? Yeah, knock on there, Anita, because we want, by way, say uh, you're born in uh, Cleveland, Ohio area, right? That's, well, right in Cleveland, Oh, you were Ohio. right in Cleveland. Yeah. All right. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. we wanted to show that some of the history of you being some of your famous pictures there. But we also wanted to say hello to Hugh that uh, you had a birthday last week, didn't you? Uh, I did. And I, I hope to have more. I wasn't real sure. Come on in here, Anita. Never We've got a cake for you from the American <laughs> oh, Space Museum. Goodness. Happy birthday, Mr. Hugh. Oh, thank you. Goodness there sake. you go. Show that, Marty. Do your camera work there and, and uh, show the... Uh, we got uh, uh, getting our staff in here. We have got... Uh, Christina is from Belgium in here. Wow. Okay. Hi, Christina. Connie's got plates. We got Selvin's here. Uh, one of our new staff members, Angie Roberts, is here, our finance director. Uh, there we are. Yeah, put that on, on his cake there. I did. Oh, pan out, pan out, so we can see it, Anita in there and everybody. No. There we yeah, are. Yes, right. No candles on it, yeah, but... Uh, thank you. It really works. Uh, the, yeah. You... To you, Hugh. <laughs> Happy love birthday you. to you. We do love you. Hugh. You. And uh, there we go. There you are, buddy. You are just one of the the great friends of our museum many years. Karen Conklin gives you her and, love. And this is all for me? That's yes, all for you. Except, all for uh, you. We did bring I, some I, extra plates I if you want to share. I think I'll share it. <laughs> good. That's, that's good. And you all stay in here because Hugh, I think it's appropriate that this Christmas season, uh, Hugh made a poem up here. So, uh, uh, but first we want to comment about uh, 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 your, I'm going to throw this up here first. There's the classic photograph of you, sir. Oh my goodness. That, uh, and I've seen it flip back and forth, left and right. That's Haven't right. you? <laughs> the, yeah. The negative is. upside down. It, it was, uh, yeah, it was usually printed backwards. Is this the right print of it? No, or? that, yeah, I think that is correct. And uh, what time frame was that taken of you? Uh, that would have been in 1975, I think. Okay. Or could have been six. There's a great kind of retirement yeah. shot of yeah. you there in front of That's the VAB. Cool. Love that picture of you, Hugh. And uh, there you all are on the horn there. Remember that event? I, I, I well, you had your picture taken thousands of times, but was that a setup for something? or? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what we were doing at mm -hmm. that point. And we had a nice birthday party for you last week. Uh, that's right. And yeah. uh, t t uh, there is Mr. John Tribe in the background and Jay Honeycutt. And here's the table there. Uh, who's the young lady right near me there? The person on the first lady on the right. I... Oh, Lisa Malone? No, no. Lisa's oh. uh, in back by, behind John Tribe. You got Jay Honeycutt on the left, John Tribe, legends of our... Apollo era, and of course, Honeycutt, Kennedy, Kennedy Space Center director, Lisa Malone, was your hand-picked uh, protege, right? Well, she, <laughs> she was a, uh, a co-op student uh, who actually went through the ranks and became the director of public affairs, mm -hmm. a very able person who did a, a great job. And then she spent the uh, a couple of years teaching at uh, University of uh, 
of yeah, Central good, Florida. Uh, great, great person. And these are the Frank Ken Havocots <clears throat> there. Uh, you have a little monthly gathering, and uh, t tell us what you call that. Well, <laughs> we call it the G O B and W, and it used to be. It really was an outgrowth of the old Canaveral Press Club, and uh, now I think I may be the only member of the press club who uh, still goes, although um, uh, there's one other person in the, uh, and that will come mm -hmm. to me. G-O-B-N-W is, what does that well, stand for, we, your acronym? We added W. Well, originally it was good old boys, and uh, but the, uh, and it didn't seem appropriate to say and girls, so the W is for women. All right. And, um, and it probably should be G O M N W for men and women. But it's not. Well, uh, I'm privileged to have been attending that recently. Thank you for the invite. And these are just, just the, the what we call our national treasures getting together at a little seafood restaurant and, and swapping stories and occasionally have a birthday party there. Well, every one of them made a major contribution to Oh, that. you're no doubt about that. But I just witnessed, folks, just within the last hour, these young kids on a tour here in our museum wanting to get an autograph oh. from from you <laughs> there. Yeah. And uh, the, they have no clue, really, who you are, but someday they will know who you are. Well, and I, that's, that, that makes me happy. Well, I think it's really important for the young people uh, to be interested because space really is about people here on Earth, what comes from uh, the uh, development of technology to go into space and the technology that comes from space uh, and hundreds of thousands of, uh, of benefits have already come just in the medical field uh, from our flying in space. So the, uh, it's really what keeps helps keep this country competitive with other countries uh, commercially. And uh, the, the theory behind NASA goes back into the uh, about 1914 with the creation of the uh, National Advisory Committee on Aeronautics. Mm -hmm. And that philosophy has uh, uh, been maintained, which says the uh, private industry should do the things that private industry can do uh, uh, economically properly, and uh, the government should do the things uh, that are not commercially viable yet to get that technology going through private industry, which then has it uh, to put into commercial products and uh, things for people's benefit. Well, what a future forward thinking there from a man that's you're working on your ninth decade and the changes you've seen in your life, sir, just no, everyday I, I, conveniences, you know, is, is what is what, you know, I think about I'm working on my hundredth decade. Yeah, hundred. Well, nine, yeah, you've done 90. OK, your hundred. Tenth decade. Tenth decade. But uh, what a lucid gentleman and what a contribution you've made to our museum over our 20 years here, Hugh Harris. And we're very grateful for you. And like I said, seeing these kids wanting your autograph warms my heart. We have a, a great STEAM program going on now with uh, mm -hmm. Darren Roberts is the leader of that, and he's doing a fabulous job. Kids were doing coding today in this building for the first time ever, probably. So uh, our outreach is far and wide now with the American Space Museum. And someday I'm going to go back to college and learn about coding. All right, you do that. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll do that. I'll enroll with you. Maybe Marty uh, will we'll, we'll check it out there. We hadn't said hi to Marty Winkle, our wonderful co-producer. He is on the UCAC mic with uh, Connie McDaniels, learning the ropes there a little bit. Hi, Marty. Hi, Connie. Hey, Mark. How are you? Well, making sure that Tom and Mark Usiak are watching this wonderful program. I'm sure they probably are. Hello to uh, Robert Law up in Scotland, Dundee, Scotland. Oh, yeah. He's probably enjoying yeah. a cocktail right now. I like Scotland. You like Scotland? You been there? Oh, oh yeah. Been to Dundee? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, 
But, and it's I like walking with... across the street, probably. It's a yeah. small, <laughs> small town, small country <laughs> there. Uh, we've got, like I said, a young lady here who's with the uh, satellites going to be launched Friday. Yeah, well, She's what... from a small country, Lux, uh, uh, Belgium, Luxembourg. But we, we have many visitors from Belgium, don't we, yes, Anita? We do. yeah. I and, mean, really, and, almost and, once a month now and, that they've opened up. So. And what she doesn't know, because it was before she was born, the... I went through Belgium on my 21st birthday. Uh, was, Did you really? Yes. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, Christina, is, what's the company you're with, hon? SES. SES, the largest satellite company. You spent your 21st birthday in Europe. Uh, so did I. I was actually in Rome. I was in. The, I was in the army. <laughs> I was. I was a journalist covering the World Food Conference uh, as a young man. That was my twenty-first birthday. That's very interesting. But uh, but I also uh, I was going that direction uh, through Belgium uh, to go over to England and deliver a uh, a bottle of uh, of liquor to Somerset Mom. And the, uh, was it scotch? Uh, I think it Good was, old... yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, we're having a great time here celebrating Hugh's birthday, Christmas. This is going to be a long show, folks. I'm not going to try to hurry it up or cut it off because... This gentleman has got a lot of good information. Only he can share with you about some Christmases in space. Uh, but before we get to that, I'd love this my little Apollo uh, ornament there. Uh, you have a special uh, prose that you put together for us. Well, I'm glad you didn't call it a poem. Uh, I was modeling it after it was the night before Christmas. But I really haven't written in, uh, written poems since I was fifteen. <laughs> but the, uh, um, well, give us goes, what you have there. You've got a nice little uh, uh, soliloquy. Then we'll say. Uh, of, uh, Twas six months before Christmas in '68, and all through NASA headquarters, the wise men were talking and thinking out loud. Uh, we'll have people in orbit this Christmas, you know, and ought to do something, don't you think so? I, what, uh, but what do you do when there'll be 16 orbits a day? That's 16 Christmases in just one day. So the wisest of all, the NASA administrator, did what NASA always does. He called a meeting <laughs> to solve the technical dilemma. Uh, consensus was reached surprisingly fast. Uh, let the astronauts figure it out, since it'll they'll be the ones in flight, <laughs> and uh, and that's what they did with lots of aplomb. But they added the Bible to the library of problem uh, solutions. And, and you may know that on every flight, uh, there's really a sheaf of things that are, that tell them, and it's probably in computers now, that tell them what to do in the case of a problem with each of the various uh, instruments and things. So- in They the, added the Bible to in that. The, in the case of Christmas, that's where the instructions were. Excellent. Excellent. There you go. Wonderful, wonderful. We will print that on Facebook <laughs> next week on there with your permission on there. Uh, well, love it. Love it. Uh, well, we're going to talk a little bit about Christmases in space today. How do astronauts celebrate Christmases in space? And we've got uh, seven astronauts on the International Space Station. There are three Chinese. I don't think they're uh, orbiting their space station. They don't celebrate Christmas. But uh, some Chinese do, though, I'm sure. Uh, oh, I'm sure there's a lot of them. Christian that do. holiday and so forth. And, <laughs> yeah. and uh, please don't uh, be offended. We love Hanukkah. We love uh, whatever you want to call your celebration. I particularly like Festivus and the, the, the Seinfeld parody of Christmas uh, on there. Uh, but uh, uh, please, we're, we want to be inclusive of everybody. Uh, so, uh, yes, Marty. Uh, we went to see, excuse me, we went to see uh, Bill MacArthur today, the astronaut encounter. 
Yeah. And he was talking about the Russians and Christmas in space. And they do celebrate, they exchange gifts on January 1st, New Year's Eve. Uh huh. And they do celebrate Christmas, I think they said on January 7th. Yeah, I was, I was going to bring that up because uh, if they're in, uh, in orbit, then both the uh, American and French, et cetera, astronauts get to celebrate Christmas twice. Uh, and of course, the Russians do too because of that. And sometimes Hanukkah's there and that gets celebrated too, as it did on one flight. Um, We'll, we'll talk, we'll about, talk that. about that here coming up there. Uh, Hugh, take it away. The first Christmas involved uh, the rendezvous of Apollo, or, or no, the first kind of not Christmas in space, but the allusion to it was during 56 years ago. The rendezvous with Gemini 7 and 6. Gemini 7 launched on a two day mission with Frank Borman and Jim Lovell. And about 10 days into that flight, Wally Shira and Tom Stafford make a quick poop up day one day and one day back. Yeah, well, they didn't, of course, spend Christmas in orbit, but um, they they did do um, uh, one thing that uh, I thought I don't think I don't know whether you have the audio from that. I don't think so, but um, uh, during the time that uh, they were up there and were about to come back, uh, they said that they saw something happening that they needed to report on and that uh, they thought it was a uh, some kind of spacecraft that was down below them going from uh, north to south uh, over the earth that got and, the guys like this at mission control listening huh uh, well it certainly did and they <laughs> and uh, the uh, and then they brought out a harmonica and uh, and bells and uh, played jingle bells on the uh, harmonica and and rang the bells so that the uh, people in uh, mission control could hear what uh, they were gathering from this strange object. <laughs> that had been Wally Shira and Tom Stafford, Wally known for taking that harmonica to space. And, yes. Uh, that's neat. To probably the first uh, illusion, or, you know, uh, of astronauts having fun with Santa Claus in space. Of course, you alluded in your neat poem there, the Apollo 8, uh, 1968. These three men, all alive, Frank Borman again, and Jim Lovell with the Santa hat on. That's Bill Anders in the middle. Lovell and Borman, uh, you're just a, a youngster to them. They're 94 years old. Oh, well. I'm going to get there. You are going to get there. <laughs> we can, and you're going to be watching him on Stay Curious get there. So uh, we love that. Uh, quite a moment uh, in space history, Hugh. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your recollection of this as a young man. Apollo 8. Oh, Apollo 8. <laughs> the, uh, well, that was uh, while I was still at the uh, Lewis Research Center. Uh, in Cleveland, but certainly uh, I followed that. And that was uh, uh, a pretty exciting uh, uh, thing. But they, um, uh, you know, there was only a few individuals um, uh, who have ever spent Christmas in space. And uh, I think we uh, ought to go on, go on uh, yeah we'll that. talk uh, just on the um, apollo 8 here's children the, watching the, as they orbited the moon they read from that backup that's uh, right tech, uh, help uh, the bible <laughs> the book of genesis well i and i think that is very appropriate i uh i've thought about it at the time and and you reminded me when you said we we're going to talk about this but the uh what what they read uh, from Genesis is something that was applicable to people of whatever religion they were, yeah, or absolutely. ones that uh, you know were not religious, because it was really about uh, uh, people here on Earth, and uh, it was one of those things that uh, uh, can be really 
universally uh, enjoyed. So I thought that it was a, a great solution uh, that they had to what do you do on Christmas. I will never forget watching that with the family. Um, it was our Christmas Eve party of the in-laws and outlaws at our house in Finley, Ohio. And uh, you know where Finley is. Uh, yeah. Being a, a Buckeye yourself. But I didn't know you had outlaws. In yeah, well, our family did. We're, we're uh, you know, we're... But I uh, had a telescope out back and pulling people out there to look at the crescent moon as they were orbiting it. And then going inside and you, they actually had a camera live and the moon is slowly moving beneath them as mm -hmm. they're reading from the Bible. Just just something amazing. Uh, 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 that, that, one of the greatest public relation moves of NASA of all time, I think. Well, and, and I, I'm not sure that uh, you know, it was planned so much as a public relations move. Um, I I think I I give credit to the yes. Yeah, I, I, so, exactly. So. Borman and Lovell uh, were the ar 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 architects of that for sure. They didn't care if NASA approved it or not. It was <laughs> no. uh, we won the moon race <laughs> that, by orbiting the right. moon. When we orbited the moon, and 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 then we're going to land on the moon uh, seven months later in July '69. Uh, the Russians had already given it up. They their their moon rocket didn't work, and this uh, the, this really proved that we were going to do it. And uh, something else on that time. And I know that you didn't put it in your notes, but I had racked up here some photos to show everybody the first Christmas uh, by Americans in space was by this uh, Skylab three crew. There, Jerry Carr. Uh, 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 Bill Pogues on the right, and of course in the center is Ed um, Gibson, who's still with us. Uh, they actually put a tree together, Hugh. And I, I can't hardly believe that they had all those cans on yeah. board. <laughs> well, they were they were all the trash maybe from the three tre previous two previous right. days too. Yes. But they put like ten cans together that food was in and made a tree. Uh, in space on Skylab, for those of you who don't know about that. Mm -hmm. But now uh, we're going to turn the spotlight over to Hugh and uh, NASA's space flight and endeavors with old Santa. Uh, and we're going to have Christmas at the International Space Station and space shuttles. Well, let, let's talk a little bit first about what's going to happen this year. Great. And then we'll talk about other ones. And... Um, the I, I had some help today. Uh, we we have a lot of um, of uh, media friends out there, and uh, when I wanted to uh, to know what was going to happen, uh, uh, the uh, they sort of leaped to the uh, uh, idea, and unfortunately, uh, one of them. Uh, uh, Rob Navius, uh, uh, who uh, is uh, in the, the media uh, relations at JSC, uh, would have liked to have been on the uh, show today, except that he's doing commentary on a Russian re-entry tonight, and so he was asleep when I called. <laughs> but the uh, in any case, uh, uh, Marsha Dunn, uh, who is a, a, a tremendous reporter uh, for Associated Press, uh, uh, talked to her contact, uh, Sandra Jones at uh, JSC, mm -hmm. and got a list of what had been sent up on the last resupply flight. And um, they had, it mentions shelf-stable food items. And shelf-stable uh, is really a uh, exactly what they have to have because on the space station they don't have a oven or a stove um, they don't have a refrigerator so everything has to uh, be able to stay uh, sterile and uh, and last uh, has to be uh, basically preserved. But in any case, they're going to have mm. salmon, duck breast confit with capers. Mm, I love that. Cake with almonds and pears, spicy green beans, cran apple dessert, 
cranberry horseradish sauce, mm. almonds, pumpkin pie, candy corn, mellow cream autumn mix, and shortbread t uh, cookies with several gel icing colors. And um, the uh, one of the uh, other things that has to happen is that they try not to have anything uh, that produces crumbs because you don't want them floating around and you can't have liquids floating around the uh, cabin and getting in the uh, electronics. Um, they, they also, uh, uh, you know, have instructions on how to uh, assemble everything. But... Um, well, it, thank you, Sandra Jones, for sending that to you. I'd like to try that cranberry horseradish sauce. Well, cran cranberry sauce apparently too. goes up there quite often. One of the interesting things is when you take it out of whatever package it is, it stays in exactly the same shape it was in. Right. And doesn't come apart at all until you, I guess, slice into it with a, a spoon. And uh, you probably know that astronauts eat almost everything with a spoon. And the reason for that has to do, again, with is not uh, getting um, anything that would float away that might happen if you were cutting things with a fork and knife. So uh, hmm. spoons are the uh, primary utensil uh, for eating in space. Even at Christmas. Even at Christmas. Well, we we see them eating in space on the videos out there at the astronaut encounter that uh, Nick Thomas, our our ASM friend here, the astronaut wrangler, they're always showing those videos up there mm -hmm. of them eating their food and having fun with it. And, of course, they tell kids, you can play with your food in space, just not in front of your mom at your <laughs> your, your home table there. Well, so. they, they play with it in front of the TV cameras. Absolutely, sometimes. yeah. Yeah, well, good. That's good. We're going to look at some space station and shuttle missions there that Hughes assembled for us there and uh, look first at... Uh, uh, our reindeer going across the 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 way there, but um, this is um, one of the crews up there. Uh, Christmas time, uh, they they do have a good time. They they they've gotten look they got uh, stockings on the wall up there. That's Chris Hadfield, I know, with the guitar Canadian. So this is probably about a almost uh, twenty year photo when the shuttle well, it's probably at least mm -hmm. ten years old. Shuttle stop going up there. But what's the first mission you want to talk about today, Hugh, of our eight shuttles of November? Uh, well, we got 103. December, yes. Yeah, shuttles, <laughs> yeah, get me. You got your 103 there. Where's your, oh, you took your tabs out of them. There you go. Well, what 103 was a, uh, a Hubble servicing mission. Um, there's the uh, astronauts actually, uh, with their Santa hats. And um, they uh, actually came back uh, on the 27th of December. So they uh, weren't there too long after the, uh, the Christmas. But um, one of the things they took up, um, and I guess you could call them Christmas presents, is uh, they carried up... Um, hundreds of uh, of thousands of student signatures um, as part of the uh, the student signature in space program and um, this uh, provided um, elementary schools uh, with a memento of something that had flown in space but uh, yeah, another thing about um, SDS uh, uh, 103 was discovery reached the highest orbit ever flown in the uh, the program's history uh, to an apogee of um, 378 miles uh, above the earth and it was uh, it happened to be discovery's first uh, uh, solo um, space flight hmm. and uh, 
1999. Yeah, and all the other missions uh, that Discovery flew uh, were ones to the uh, International Space Station. But, um, uh, you know, like all missions, uh, they had important um, jobs to do uh, while they were up there. And um, they, uh, uh, it, um, on 103 it, up there, it was, Scott uh, Kelly was the commander. Looking at my shuttle scroll here. No, Brown. Kurt Brown was the commander, and Scott Kelly was the pilot. Okay. Right. Yeah. It was and the I, third Hubble service mission. And I, I think uh, the, the fact that uh, Scott is a, uh, a senator, the second uh, astronaut senator uh, in in Congress, yes. is really uh, well, third. tremendous. Glenn and uh, Harrison Schmidt. Oh, was in New right. Mexico. Forgot Don't forget about Jack Harrison. Schmidt. Yeah. Getting ready to launch off the moon 50 years ago, Apollo 17. They, um, and I well, we did have didn't... a, yeah, that's, that's uh, the Hubble crew was up there Christmas time, 1999. But Whatever, that, yeah. that was a difficult mission uh, when they, uh, they had to replace the gyroscopes mm -hmm. uh, that kept the, uh, the Hubble. Uh, focusing on the right places in space. And uh, uh, it turns out that uh, really the, the gyroscopes were re dependent on a very, uh, the, the, the gyroscopes uh, were dependent on a very thin wire. And it turned out that um, the design of them uh, had used uh, oxygen and the oxygen had corroded the uh, the wire, and so the uh, the new gyroscopes uh, uh, were made differently and uh, used hmm. nitrogen. Uh, Hugh, we want to say hi to Lee Eileen watching. Carrie Fink is watching. Carlton Bailey got up from his nap to watch you today. Say hi. really well. Yeah. Car Carlton's a great uh, photographer. He certainly is. He's a good friend. We love teasing him. Uh, Cliff Watson is in Pomona, Australia. He sent us 100 stars, so he's having um, brekkie there in the morning there. Uh, Joyce Ar Arbery. Abbey? Or Joyce Abbey. Hi, Joyce. Carol Cavanaugh, I think you know her. Uh, absolutely. She was a, a vital part of our uh, public affairs office uh, for many, many years. Hi, Carol. Glad you're watching Stay Curious with the one and only Mr. Hugh Harris. Rebecca Vicknar. Mike Cotton, you've been on my mind all week. Good that you uh, up there, buddy. I'll give you a phone call. I've seen, uh, got your new Facebook uh, alert and all that stuff. Mike Cotton does documentaries. He did a documentary on the mobile launch platform, too, mm. that we have the DVD on that we can sell people in our gift shop. Doug Forrest is watching in Los Angeles with interest, I know. Ophelia Sautero, she's in Normandy, France. Oh, the French, uh, I wonder how that's, that football tur turned out today. Ah, uh, between heard. the French and uh, uh, who was it they were playing the underdog? Uh, Ophelia knows. Russia? No. Uh, who? Morocco. Morocco. Yes, yes Morocco. Yes. We're going to find out who won that football match. Dave Stangy's watching up in Michigan. Robert Law, as we said, is in Dundee, Scotland. William Whiting's a great friend of ours now. Mm -hmm. He's up in Michigan. Hassan Aletelwell, thank you, Hassan, for watching. David Pines. Gary Gerald is our peanut farmer in Georgia. He stays curious with us almost every day. He could become a president. Yeah, he could. <laughs> He'd be a good one. Corey Skinner is watching. Uh, so, uh, thank you all for staying curious with Mr. Hugh Harris today. Hugh, one of the missions of, um, November or December that almost had a bad outcome and all you space geeks know it is STS-27 and here's the launch of STS-27. Tell us about that, Hugh. Well, the, um, uh, that, that was a beautiful launch, uh, uh, in the, in the crystal clear skies. And it was the second mission after the uh, the Challenger disaster, and um, 
the uh, two months is, uh, earlier, um, the, uh, it, uh, the discovery uh, had brought the uh, fleet back to uh, active service. And uh, commanders on 27 included um, Hoot Gibson and uh, Guy Gardner was the pilot and Mike Mullane, Jerry Ross, and Bill Shepard uh, were the, uh, uh, the uh, other people there. And uh, it was a classified uh, mission for the Department of Defense. So we really can't uh, uh, tell you uh, uh, about uh, what they did while they were there. But um, when they came back, uh, they discovered that they were lucky to have actually lived through the landing. Uh, when it touched down, it touched down at Edwards Air Force Base. Uh, and uh, they, after the mission, the uh, astronauts uh, got off and they saw a whole gaggle of engineers uh, who were around the shuttle nose shaking their heads uh, in disbelief at what they were seeing. And um, there were more than 700 tiles uh, that had been damaged and one very close to the nose of the uh, Atlantis was completely missing. So the, uh, it was uh, also the, uh, the damage along the uh, belly went all the way up uh, mm. to the uh, uh, the wing the edge of the uh, of the wings so the um, luckily um, there was enough to take care of the uh, 5,000 degrees of heat mm. they were uh, lucky and they were very very lucky and of course uh, later on we'd found found out of course that uh, you know, how dangerous that was with the loss mm -hmm. of Columbia. But um, the review um, uh, team uh, traced the, uh, the damage to a change in the manufacturing methods. And um, in, uh, in doing the uh, uh, insulating material, and uh, that was improved uh, uh, to uh, make the ablative material much more resistant uh, to the damage that occurred. This but, is, all of you know, is one of the most closest calls that uh, any of the astronauts had without dying. Uh, Pooh Gibbs, they actually could feel the impact mm -hmm. of stuff coming off the ET uh, right immediately that first few seconds of ascent. Right. They knew they had been <clears throat> damaged, and there's a whole other story to that that, that we'll tell one day of the astronauts uh, being mad about it and basically thinking they were going to die. I've heard Jerry Ross talk about it, that mm -hmm. Commander Hoot Gibson said, just look out the window, you're going to die, so and enjoy what you're going to see. And yeah. am I correct? That's that's absolutely right. And uh, uh, So but, it was a miracle they made it back. What do you think if we would have lost a second shuttle? Well, within, that would have been in the end of the program. You really probably. think it would have been? Yeah, it almost was the end uh, uh, when Challenger occurred. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about whether or not uh, that should be continued. And the, the shuttle was a uh, really a very capable uh, vehicle in the long run. And uh, we never could have built the uh, International Space Station uh, uh, in the the form that it ended up uh, if we didn't have it. Uh, because if you look at other space stations, like the Russian space station and the Chinese ones, uh, which do use uh, expendable rockets uh, to get up there, uh, there's not the capability for carrying the same size components and the, uh, and the people to actually assemble them and uh, and make them put them together and make them all work but um, so it, it was very very fortunate that that mm -hmm. it did not end in a tragedy. Well, this is the 27th and 
we did 135 launches, mm -hmm. 133, uh, 134 successful missions. Uh, Columbia was a successful mission. We just lost the, the orbiter and the people uh, aborted, of course. Uh, so, yeah, really, we, we, we launched another 100 and, uh, you know, uh, some missions mm -hmm. that, uh, like you said, built the International Space Station. It has changed the way we live. Uh, well, a happier time, a happier launch in December is uh, this one where uh, Tom Usiak uh, and the uh, Usiak brothers, hello guys in Pennsylvania. I hope they got their coats back from the cleaners, you know, I, I their winter they coats did. so they can <laughs> <laughs> got to rub it in a little bit there. They, they love coming down here. But uh, this was uh, STS-35. Uh, uh, that was the tenth flight of the uh, space shuttle Columbia. Vance Brand, and, the commander there, an uh, Apollo astronaut, and Guy Gardner again taking a pilot seat mm -hmm. in December. Astro One was the mission. Well, it, it was um, the final uh, shuttle flight of 1998 or 1993, and it was a very complex uh, manned mission. Um, they had five back-to-back -back spacewalks totaling 35 hours and uh, 28 minutes. And uh, they completed the uh, first servicing of the Hubble Space Telescope. Um, and uh, that, uh, the space, to, uh, the, the Hubble was designed to be serviced and uh, but uh, I don't think that uh, people realized how difficult it would be. But uh, it really produced a tremendous amount of, uh, of information uh, uh, through its lifetime. Oh, absolutely. Still, and, still and doing. Still is, yes. And 61 was also a December uh, repair mission there, a uh, sh uh, shuttle mission. 53 is the next one I'm going to show there. No, not that. We want to go back to 53 uh, is a 1992 December mission with Discovery, a DOD mission. Right. So I can't talk about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> or you'll have to kill well, me. Mostly because I don't know anything about right. it. Right. And top secret uh, uh, assets to our country using our billion dollar space shuttle to, to protect our nation. Yes. Uh, and uh, a... a uh, Jim Adamson, astronaut that was on a DOD mission mm -hmm. and uh, West Point uh, guy he just said uh, these DOD missions had some interesting assets on them yeah, that, that sure. really uh, uh, in, brought down the Iron Curtain in Berlin for sure uh, during the, the Reagan administration. Well, so. one of the things that was interesting is that uh, mm -hmm. I think Bob Cabana, uh, who had his second mission, uh, on 53 uh, and his fourth mission uh, later on uh, uh, not well in the month of December not mm -hmm. in the same year right um, the uh, and who was the uh, the center director at uh, at the Kennedy Space Center uh, uh, really uh, uh, did a, a great service uh, while he was an astronaut and now He's at NASA headquarters mm -hmm. uh, uh, as the sort of second in command there. He did. Uh, and <clears throat> we're going to see a picture. Of, yeah, he is a 12 year center director. Turned the lights on on STS 88 on our space station. Going to show you a picture of that in a minute. But STS 61, Hugh, uh, had uh, this uh, going on the dreidel. Uh, well, yeah, that wasn't a specific mission. No, it wasn't. <laughs> the, uh, okay. Well, that was the Hubble mission, but here's a dreidel that they had in space there. You had a note on that to yes, talk I about. Did. The, uh... and, but they also had a menorah, too. Right. And uh, and so it's important, uh, you know, that people not only recognize Christmas uh, in both Russia and the United States, but also... Uh, other religious mm -hmm. holidays and uh, 
the uh, the astronaut uh, uh, core really is made up of people of of many faiths, and uh, but I I think spinning a dreidel in in space would be maybe a lot more fun than doing it on the floor. <laughs> Absolutely. It would but, never stop spinning. That's right. Theoretically, yeah, and with no and friction on. there. <laughs> uh, you're talking about STS-88 and uh, Bob Cabana. Uh, this is what our space station looked like 22 years ago, 23 years ago, because 88 was, uh, as I consult my shuttle scroll here, uh, I don't have the qu 88 was 1998 with Endeavor. Uh, the first ISS flight. Okay. Uh, Cabana was the commander with Stutkow. Russian Krikalov was on board with him. Very famous. Jerry Ross also was on board this. And this is their look at the space station. And today, of course, this is just lost inside of the, mm -hmm. the, the major complex that it become. What did you have notes on that? Here? Well, the, uh, I, I always have to applaud Jerry Ross. Uh, I, I don't know whether he has the record, but I think he may have the record for the number of space flights. And the one... Um, Correct. On, He's tied with seven with um, yeah, and, Chang uh, Diaz. And this, uh, this was the, uh, his... Um, Sixth space flight was on uh, oh, on eighty eight, uh, but the this was another one to the uh, International Space Station, and uh, took the first uh, American module, the uh, Unity node, uh, to the station, and um, they they mated that to the. Uh, there the, it is. Uh, well, and, uh, they have sort of mundane names for some things because they made it it the functional cargo block yeah <laughs> but but the unity of course has a little bit more yeah, thing fun, that's the russians function <laughs> cargo block yes the fcb uh, there well good then another shuttle that, in, that we had of uh this of december was 108 endeavor and this is an interesting picture that we had, Hugh, of 108, a juxtaposition of the Soyuz spacecraft against Endeavor, like it's in its payload there. I think that's a cool picture. It is. STS-108, and consulting my shuttle scroll, you're looking at your notes there. That was uh, December 5th to December 17th. Uh, Mark Kelly went up. Gory was the commander. They took Raffaello up there mm -hmm. to the ISS, a so cargo <clears throat> situation there. So. And it's going to be very interesting to uh, see if the International Space Station uh, is maintained uh, uh, for many years in the future, uh, because there were, you know, it was coming sort of to the end of where people would thought that it uh, Mm -hmm. you know, its life might be over, but it's it's doing uh, a lot of good work on the on it, and I think one of these days we should do something on all of the uh, uh, advancements that were made uh, through those experiments, and uh, and a lot of them have to do uh, with health, uh, and also with uh, how you manufacture things here on Earth. Excellent, stay curious idea for a program. Uh, definitely, the spinoffs are incredible. You can't let uh, blame, uh, it's hard to, we'd have to do a 10 hour show to get them all on there. <laughs> well, Christmas would. on the International Space Station, and part of it is, is them enjoying the view out of the uh, cupola, the favorite hot spot, of course, where everybody can look at, get a 360 degree view. There's somebody with some, uh, dreidel socks on there i think uh, uh for hanukkah and here's your um scott kelly uh on a christmas day up there the, now yep. the senator in arizona up there so. and, and well he did good work uh 
during the time he's been senator up. Uh, yep, twin brothers, he... Mark and Scott Kelly. Uh, Marty and I have read his book, Endurance, by Scott. It's a pretty good book. Gives you insight into some of the selections of the mm -hmm. astronauts and all. Anything to add to Christmas in space before we... we got two astronaut birthdays today. We do. Yes, we do. Uh, we have got uh, today is this gentleman's birthday. Happy birthday to Stargazer Robert Par Robert Parker. One of the first, he's the first NASA astronomer astronaut. Uh, he's eighty six. Mm. Uh, born in New York City on December fourteenth, nineteen thirty six, but he grew up in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. Uh, and then uh, he had uh, he was on STS uh, thirty five that we were talking about here uh, uh, as a December shuttle. And then Katie Coleman, a lot of people love and have met Katie Coleman. Yep. Uh, she had two space shuttle mm -hmm. missions, 73 and 93, and she spent uh, about 150 days on Expedition 26, retired Air Force colonel and vocal advocate of STEAM education. And uh, she's got, um, she is real famous for taking a flute to space. You remember anything about that, Hugh? <laughs> No. And uh, uh, she I took a like penny it. whistle and a flute. Uh, Patty Maloney of the Chieftains uh, took one of his uh, penny whistles with him, took a flute, uh, Irish flute from Matt Malloy of the Chieftains, and took a flute from Ian Anderson of the rock band Jethro Tull mm. to space. And Katie's got her own webpage, katiecoleman.com. And uh, a happy 60 uh first birthday to 62nd birthday to katie she was born in 1960 in charleston south carolina i like charleston i've been there many times yes. you've been there oh yes very nice great great town a good tourist town a good place to live i'm sure so happy birthday to robert parker and katie coleman on december 14th as they celebrate their birthday and we've got Tom Straub is watching from New Kingston, Pennsylvania, and Steve Hammer has joined the Stay Curious crowd. Well, what one uh, question that uh, came up uh, uh, while I was here was, is there any possibility of, uh, of someone who is not an astronaut going into space for Christmas? And, and actually, there's a, a possibility uh, the Virgin Galactic uh, is uh, uh, selling seats now uh, for a, a mere four hundred and fifty thousand hmm. uh, dollars, <laughs> but it doesn't. You want two of them, don't you? <laughs> you and your wife. Uh, well, <laughs> I'd, I'd probably have to take her, if I, but the, uh, uh, but that's pretty close to a million dollars that I don't have. Um, in, in any case, the uh, uh, the uh, voyage in space uh, on uh, Virgin Galactic uh, is, uh, or I think, a rather short visit. But the uh, but it is possible. Yeah, it is possible. If anybody out there wants to do that. Well, Mr. Eves Plendo, do you remember Eves Marty? Oh, we yeah. we had a great interview with him. He's had his ticket for ten years. Good waiting to fly on this Virgin Galactic of, of Richard Branson's. And uh, he paid uh, just a little, well, he, he paid about half that, what they're charging mm -hmm. now. But uh, we have a great program on that. Eve's Plendo, you watch occasionally. And thank you for watching Stay Curious. Well, Hugh, what a great program today with you. Uh, uh, celebrating your birthday again. Promise we won't do it next time you're on here. <laughs> Uh, and and celebrating Christmas, right? Astronaut style. Oh, yeah. Up there. So. I like your astronaut thing. There we go. And, <laughs> and so does everyone out there in Stay Curious Land. Uh, it won't be the last time you see it, folks. But uh, give a healthy little hurrah for Christmas in space, okay? And a hurrah for you, Mr. Hugh Harris, for helping our museum the way you do by being on Stay Curious. Marty, we have anything else to say to our friends out there on our UCAC family microphone? Nope, we're good. All caught up. Well, we enjoy our guest Christina being here. Christina, hope you enjoyed it.
our Stay Curious program here. Thank you, Connie, for sitting there wanting to learn from the master, Mr. Winkle, of our Streamlabs program here. And I thank you, Mr. Hugh Harris, for another wonderful okay. program. We'll cut the cake here afterwards here. we His 90th birthday cake here. And, uh, well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll save a piece for the Usiak brothers in oh, the freezer good, for good, them. good idea. How about that? Yes. And we'll force them to eat it. Of course. <laughs> Well, I don't know when they're going to be here again. It might be in there for six months, but probably not. So. <laughs> I hope not. Well, we hope you've all enjoyed this wonderful program about Christmases in space with the one and only Mr. Hugh Harris. Uh, again, thank you for your time and preparation to be on Stay Curious. It means a lot. And he'll be back in January with a, a twist on the, the shuttles of January. Uh, and so we wanted to thank you. I thank Marty. Thank you, Karen Conklin, our executive director. Uh, Debbie, or uh, Chris, uh, Christina, uh, I, would you, there's a, a tin over there. Would you grab that for me, please? So I may present you, young lady, present you from our staff and Karen Conklin, oh, a little Christmas goodness. treat for you and your wife there, some some nice uh, uh, cookies there. Oh, well, thank you. Well, you're welcome, Hugh. God bless you and all you stand for at age 90, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back tomorrow with a guest. Marty, we have a guest that you've lined up. Uh, yeah, it should be Rick, Rick Avion. Rick, Rick Avion. Davion. Davion. So I'll have to do my homework over the night. To, Rick is a shuttle worker, right? Yeah, yeah shuttle worker, uh, Air Force pilot. Okay. I'm not sure if he was retired or I kind of think he did. Well, well, I, I met, met him the other day. day. We'll have him in here to share some of his story on Stay Curious tomorrow. So until then, I'm Mark Marquez saying happy holidays. However you celebrate them, we're glad that you do. Be kind to family, friends, and all your humankind out there. And we will be back tomorrow to what, Hugh? Bridge the, the space oh. between us. <laughs> yes. Thank you all.